Welcome to Technology Learning Space YouTube channel. You are watching the final video in VMware Site Recovery Manager series. In the last video, we met all the configurations required for array-based replication. In this video, we are going to configure protection group, recovery plan, and finally, we will test SRM recovery. In a protection group, you are going to group all your virtual machines that you want to protect. Once you create a protection group, virtual machines will be available in vCenter inventory at recovery site. Another point you want to note here is, you cannot combine protection group for vSphere replication and array-based replication. So let's see how to create a protection group. Log into VMware vCenter, then go to site recovery, click on sites and select vCenter at site A. Go to summary. Here you can see create protection group. Click on create protection group. Enter the name for your protection group. Click next. So here is the direction of protection. We send our site A to we send our at site B. Then protection group type data store or individual VM. So here we are going to use array-based replication. So select it and click next. And select the data store you want to protect. Here I am replicating EMC data store. So I just select it and it lists out all the virtual machines in that data store. Then click next. Click finish. So here you complete creation of protection group. Next is recovery plan. It is your plan which contain steps required to run test and perform a planned migration or disaster recovery. This plan helps you to automate and control every step of the recovery process. From the same page, go and click on create a recovery plan. Give a meaningful name for your recovery plan. Then click next. Select a recovery site. Here my recovery site is vCenter site B. Then select a protection group. It can have a multiple group. Here I just have only one protection group only. Click next. And you can see two network, one for the production network, other for the test uh, network then click finish so now you have created a recovery plan we finished with all the configurations that required for a site recovery manager the next part is to test our configuration we have three options to test our recovery plan First is you can run a test recovery to your remote site then the virtual machines will be connected to an isolated network. It will not disturb or interrupt your production workloads. By this way you can test your application or you can upgrade uh, or update some patches to your virtual machines and you can verify the stability of your virtual machine or your application. The second part is you can run a planned migration which means you know there is a planned outage is coming so you want to switch all your workloads from your protected site to recovery site in this case all the virtual machines at the protected site will be shut down and will start up at the recovery site the third option is a disaster recovery migration in this case the only difference between the planned and disaster recovery migration in a planned migration SRM will check the production workloads and it will just shut down and then start up at a recovery site and if there is any changes uh, uh, to synchronize then it will complete the synchronization also in case of a disaster recovery migration there is nothing like that it will just try to start up the virtual machine at your recovery site so when you did a planned migration the next step is to reprotect it or reverse the replication direction from your recovery site to protected site 
So these three things we're gonna see now. Now to do a recovery, you have to go to recovery plan. So it will uh, show you the recovery plans available. Then click on test. So this will start up the virtual machines at your remote site in an isolated network. Click next. So during the time of test recovery, the virtual machine will be up and running at both site. In the primary site, it will be connected to your production network. And in the recovery site, it will be connected to an isolated network. So that virtual machine is reachable only the, to the machines that is available in the isolated network. It cannot talk to any other virtual machines running in the production. So this will be helpful for you to do some patches or um, upgrade and uh, testing. Such things you can do in a test and isolated network. The test recovery plan uh, has completed. Let's go to the vCenter at site B and C. You can see the virtual machine at the remote site is up and running. Let us log into this machine and uh, check the connectivity. So this is uh, the virtual machine that uh, running in the production. So I'm trying to ping to gateway. You can see it is successfully uh, pinging. The same virtual machine started running at uh, remote site in an isolated network. Uh, it cannot reach to the gateway. So this means uh, uh, the, the machine is not going to interrupt anything that in the production. Next is to clean up the test recovery. For this, go to test recovery plan. Then right click and select clean up. Click next. Then click finish. So here, what is going to happen now is it will shut down the virtual machine at the remote site and it will keep the production as it is. So whatever the changes that you made in the remote site uh, on the test uh, uh, recovered virtual machine, that changes will be deleted. Clean up test recovery progress you can monitor from the recent task. Now it has completed. Let's go and check what is the status of the virtual machine. It is, it is down now. Only the virtual machine in the primary site is running. Here we're going to do a real planned migration for this. Go to test recovery plan, right click and this time select run. So it's asking you are you going to do a planned migration or a disaster recovery. Planned migration will check the primary site is functional or not. In the case of a disaster recovery it will not check the primary site is functional or not. It will uh, start up the virtual machine at a remote state. So here we're going to do a planned migration and uh, there is a red warning you can see running the planned migration at the recovery mode will attempt to shut down the virtual machine at the protected site. So what is going to happen? It will shut down the virtual machine in the protected site and start up your virtual machine at the recovery site. Click next and finish. You can see the progress in the recent task. Go to vCenter at site B. Now the virtual machine is off and you can see the virtual machine now just switched on. So the recovery has done. You can see the virtual machine in the primary has switched off. And the virtual machine in the DR site is up and running.
when you run a recovery plan like a planned migration your total workload that was running at your protected site now is running at your recovery site so we are working like one day or two day in the recovery site so you need to protect uh, reprotect this virtual machine or you need to sync this virtual machine from this uh, dr site to main site and for that go to the recovery plan right click and click reprotect so what will happen now now the workloads running at your remote site will replicate all the changes to your main site like protected site so this will help you to uh, sync all the changes that you made uh, during the during the time that you worked in your dr site click next then click finish you can see the progress in the recent tasks So in the demonstration we completed the planned migration and also we reversed the replication direction from recovery site to protected site. Now your production workloads are running at the site B and site A is acting as a, as a recovery site. So if you want to reverse this you need again you need to do a planned migration. So it means all the virtual machine at site B will be switched off and then the virtual machines will be started at site A. Then you have to reprotect to reverse the direction of replication from site A to site B. That's all about VMware Site Recovery Manager series. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe us for more videos and visit itproguide.com for more articles and tutorials.